fan fiction. The word itself has many connotations. This vast network of amateur digital writing has many strange plots, strange interests, and strange remixes of the media we're familiar with. And this makes them really fun to read into. Their weirdness and lack of moderation make fanfiction one of the most hilarious forms of writing to outsiders. I have a shamefully long history of reading bad fanfictions for fun. So when I found a fanfiction with a word count above 1 million, it was no surprise that I was interested. I needed to do some digging. And oh god, did I dig. Join me as we explore the history and the contents of one of the weirdest internet anomalies I've ever encountered. Loud House Revamped. Loud House Revamped is a fanfiction rewrite of The Loud House, a Nickelodeon TV show I have fond memories of. Its fandom is insane, though, shipping characters in the same family with each other. Moving on, the story was created on November 6, 2017, and submitted to fanfiction.net. It is over 2,000 chapters, and the word count, get ready for this, is 16,777,215 as of this video, which is roughly 21 times the length of the Holy Bible except it's actually longer. It's so large, it breaks the 24-bit integer limit on fanfiction.net and has been stuck on that number since at least two years ago. This, by far, classifies it as the longest piece of English literature to ever exist. But, surprisingly, the title of longest English text by word count wasn't taken by a fanfiction just once. The original longest piece of written English, right before Loud House Revamped, was the fanfiction Subspace Emissaries World Conquest, with a shocking 4 million words. It's a Super Smash Bros. fic made in 2008 about the main character and Lucario fighting off evil. I don't... I don't entirely know what evil, I didn't research that far. Apparently the story was actually well written. The author, Ara Channel or Chris, has a YouTube channel with 30k subs. Well, the more recent stuff only gets like 20 views, so it isn't sustained, but who cares. But the thing is, even at 4 million words, the story is still only one fourth of the Loud House revamped. What the hell? How can people write this much? Do they proofread? Do they revise? Like, I, I don't get it. The description of Loud House revamped reads, this is my own version of the Loud House where I moved to Royal Woods, Michigan. When I move to Michigan and meet the Loud Kids, the entirety of the universe will change forever. Get ready, evil. Justice has many brand new faces. The universe now is a bunch of new champions. self insert OC story, crossovers with other shows later on, mixed genres, multi-crossover, harem later on. Oh great, this is gonna be a good one. The author goes by the screen name James Dean 5842 with his real name being James Knudsen. I, I didn't dox him, by the way, it's in the story. By reading his description, an image of James, or JD, comes into focus. He was born in late 1987, making him 36 today, and he has autism. About his sudden rise to fame, and infamy to some, he says this. <coughs> he does not say that. For me, it's all about fun. I just want to share everything I know and have fun. And to tell you the truth, I had no idea that there was a record for the longest ever known story. I was never intending to go for a world record, let alone have my story become the longest ever known in the history of the world. I'm sorry that I made all of you jealous because of it, but it's all about fun for me. He also often mentions his distaste for negativity. I never accept bad opinions, bad criticism, racial slurs, hateful comments, people hurting my friends, and many bad things. So please, none of that stuff. Does this video count as a bad opinion? Oh, I hope not. And finally, he ends it with an appeal. But please, leave good comments on what you think of my story and favorite it. All rights of the shows belong to their rightful owners. Results may vary. Sounds like he's describing an SCN on TV product at the end. By searching his handle into Google, we discover how little information there is of him. Most sites are stuffed with malware anyway, so it's not like I can access them. The only thing I could really find was... A Loud House revamped wiki? Okay, before I mention the Loud House revamped fan Wikipedia, please don't ever go there if you value sanity. It's filled with vulgarity and offensive content, and it's horrifically irresistible. It's like watching a car crash. Anyways, to my knowledge, it was an actual wiki for the story before I got grief. It has an astonishing 190 articles, but half of them are a character named Bella. And the other half is shit like fart, fart with reverb, man's road, Matt, we sports, and... <laughs> Racism. That racism one in particular reads as follows. JD Nudson, as well as the vast majority of Team Loud Phoenix Force, are ardent followers of the racism. In particular, they are viscous white supremacists. Aren't you just so excited to read this story? The worst grief by far is on the JD Nudson page, where his bio was replaced with the Wikipedia entry on Hitler. And, and under the trivia section, it says, he owes me $14, poo poo caca baby. And finally, JD is theorized to have a massive fart fetish. I. <laughs> I think that's enough. Let's just move on to the community page and see what people have to say about all of this. Reading the community tab, we can get some clues as to what exactly happened, even though there's only like four posts. The first community post is in late 2020 by Brock Lucas entitled, Take down the Loud House revamped. This monstrosity of a fanfic has gone too long. We need the mods at fanfiction.net to take down the Loud House revamped and the author. Who's with me? <laughs> 
He acts like he's starting a coup. Everyone clowned on him in the replies. Another post in 2021 says how even if they think the story is bad, they respect how long it is. And another one half a year later warns people that the wiki is a, quote, anti-TLH revamped propaganda site. Finally, the most recent is from SpongeBoy0009, simply saying, the fuck is this? I'm crying. What happened in the story to make it so hated? And to figure that out, I did the unthinkable. I read the thing. But I couldn't have just read it alone. That level of raw exposure would kill a man. So I enlisted my bestest friend in the whole world for mental torture. Meet Gravy. He and I are fanfiction veterans, and it all started two years ago after we read a FNAF fanfiction from 2016 called Expect the Unexpected. It's about an edgy self-insert falling in love with the animatronics. Needless to say, we didn't expect the unexpected. What's even funnier is that he's an author, a great one in my opinion. Because he's so familiar with good stories, it's incredible to see him exposed to bad ones. So when I started investigating Loud House Revamped, he was the first one I thought of to brave the uncharted territory with me. Do you know anything about the Loud House? I, I do. I know things about the Loud House, but they are extremely minuscule things. We both had no idea what was coming, and there was no better time to dive into chapter one. Right off the bat, the first thing we noticed about the story was the weird narration style. Why is it written like this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a script, like, is this gonna be like a TV show someday? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the Loud House revamp. But enough about the writing. Let's move on to the fighting. The first chapter is a prologue that starts in media res. There's an epic zoom in from space with an earth plagued by villains. Well, according to the story, bank robbers, bad guys, and alien invaders specifically. But don't worry, don't worry, the earth is fine. Because then we're introduced to the main crime fighting squadron, Team Loud Phoenix Force, with a interesting variety of members. James Dean Nudson and his family, Lincoln Loud <laughs> and his sisters, Riley Anderson, Hercules and Zoe Weatherly and their many friends. Riley Anderson. Is that the person from like Inside Out? Let's find out. It is! What? Remember that whole crossover obsession thing? Here we go. Actually, something I noticed through our read through was that Team Loud Phoenix Force is kind of genocidal. They tear people apart, electrocute people into ash, blow up people to pieces. Like, I get that these are like bad guys, but like, why not just. Chuck him into high security prison like literally every other superhero does. The chapter concludes with the assertion that the greatest adventure has just begun. And directly after reading that, Gravy accidentally left a review. N type of review? The greatest work of art our generation has ever seen. Thank you. Best ever for Eve. Ah! Oh, that actually worked! Anything would work! <laughs> <laughs> no, Red, I swear, I actually didn't think that would work. I thought I'd have to what? log in. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I don't even have the count. Chapter 2 starts off strong. I'm kidding. It's very low energy compared to the last one. Chapter 2 and 3 are actually parts 1 and 2 of the subsection Origins. This means we begin our story with JD moving to Michigan. He comes from Colorado, but after winning the Colorado Lottery, he can afford to move to his new, quote, multi-million dollar mansion in Michigan. C Colorado to Michigan? You... You sure about that? While strolling through his new neighborhood, he pretty much just bumps into Lincoln Loud, the main character of The Loud House, and he invites JD over to his house. After this, the story tells us how he meets every character, all 11 of them, in thorough detail. The story has an issue with redundancy and repetition, and oh god, it shows here. This is my friend JD Nelson. He said that, like, three, that, those exact words in that order. He just moved here times. from Colorado. <laughs> I feel like I'm going insane. Another thing about this section is that every character just kind of talks like JD. On that topic, JD also just instantly seems to know how to appease the characters. A football flew in and I caught it. Wow, you got quick reflexes, because of course JD does, because he's good at everything. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a fantasy going on. His interaction with Lenny Loud is especially concerning, considering he's 36, and I forgot to tell Gravy. You sure are, you sure are pretty, <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> Whoa! Jeans, How old is James Dean? How old is James Dean? Um, he was born in 87. James Dean! What <laughs> the fuck? Wait, what? You waited to drop that on me now? And to end off chapter two, who the fuck is Lainey Loud? In the Loud House show, there are 10 sisters, but in this story, there's 11. That's because JD added a sister named Lainey Loud, who's apparently into art. Needless to say, this caught me off guard. Fourth youngest came in. Lainey? Who's Lainey? What? Part two of the origin story is literally just the plot of a Loud House episode, now with JD in it. The next few chapters are the same format as this. Chapter three is almost the same concept as chapter two. It's an episode of the Loud House, but 
he's in it now, I guess. It's also revealed that he's a Jedi for some reason. I use the force and bring Lily's blanket over to me and wrap her in it. And he writes that he's 15 in the story, which we were so relieved to hear. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Read this. Yes. I'm 15 in my fan fictions, but bio bi biologically in real life, I'm 30. Oh, oh my God. God. Thank God. The ending is just everyone verbally patting him on the back for being cool. But one thing that caught us off guard was that the formatting got better here. Bolded names, quotation marks, scene descriptors, and very accurate characterization. But suspiciously, anytime he talked or someone responded to him, the formatting disappeared. Obviously, this set up some alarm bells. So, as foxes are prone to do, I did a bit more digging, and we made a large discovery. The script! I found the script! It's the exact same format! <gasps> he just stole it! No, but literally, he here. literally look, look! It's just it's just it without JD. It's the same thing. Yeah, turns out he just copy pasted. Chapter three is based off of a stolen Loud House fan wiki transcript of an actual episode, season one, episode one, Left in the Dark. But it goes deeper. Chapter four, heavy metal. Chapter five, hand me downer. Chapter six, the sweet spot. It just kept going and going and going. All of the filler chapters were just altered versions of pre-existing episode scripts. God, no wonder the story is so long. But Okay, the way I'm wording this makes it seem like he did something criminally wrong. He didn't. It's a fan fiction, I don't really mind. It's not coming from a bad place. And I have some insight as to why. I'm... I'm gonna be real with you guys, alright? But you have to promise not to tell anyone. I... actually have written one fan fiction in my life when I was in middle school. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I won't give any of you any more information, I've already said too much. But one of the main reasons I wrote it is because one summer I was just like, what would it be like if I was with the characters? That'd be kinda cool. To me, that is exactly what's going on with JD. I think there's nothing wrong with that. That does not, however, explain another thing that happens in the text, which I think is a bit more disturbing. Um... WHAT?! WHAT?! <gasps> WHAT?! <laughs> What? <laughs> I can't tell you why, but the further through the story you go, the more dark themes you encounter. Bloody fist fights, imprisonment, the dichotomy between good and evil. In chapter 371, they bombed a city, including the high school and the mayoral office. I mean, to be fair, it was Quahog from Family Guy, so I'm not upset, but that's still insane. Especially because the story frames genocide as a good thing. Last week's switch was so powerful that it could be heard all the way from New York City, and the mushroom cloud could be seen all the way from Boston. We did it, guys. Mission accomplished. You said it, JD. Another dysfunctional town completely destroyed. That's so evil! They're the bad guys. They're blatantly evil. So they're going around destroying towns they deem as dysfunctional? On a side note, the story mentions that the explosion could be seen from Boston, and, uh, we calculated how big the explosion would have to be. Oh my god. If this is equal to the Tsar Bomba, that means that, like, the shockwave will go around the Earth three times. Also, more cartoon universes are progressively added to the story as well. Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Woody Woodpecker, Naruto, gender-swapped versions of the main cast, Scooby-Doo, Family Guy, and that's just a fraction. One of the most recent chapters to me is a great representation of how chaotic this crossing over really gets. Chapter 2252 features the harem we discussed earlier. Remember that? I don't. And paragraphs upon paragraphs paragraphs of the same transformation sequence for different characters with random Japanese text describing the same thing as the English text. This chapter is called The Case of the Frankenstein Chicken. I, I can't make this up. There is so much untapped content in this story. Me and Gravy only covered half of a percent of it. Please, if this interests you, give it a read. You will not be disappointed. But I still think that there's another important takeaway from this. Usually when fan fictions are discussed, it's pretty negative, especially ones like Loud House revamped with all the crossovers and self-inserts and powers and cringe. But I think it's important to clarify that no matter how weird the story might be, there is nothing wrong with this. Well, nothing wrong with it existing, I mean. I actually think that it's pretty good that this exists. By examining it today and discussing why it's so funny, we are not trying to degrade the story. Even if it seems crude and amateurish and, for lack of a better term, bad, I think it's really inspiring that the longest written piece of English text it's just a dude at his computer who really likes the Loud House. Uh, takeaways. Uh, I, I respect fan fictions. You'd be surprised. I talked to a bunch of... A lot of the, the, the mentors I had, especially this summer. I don't do this, by the way. I don't, I don't enjoy writing fan fictions. But they recommended it, because it's a good way, believe it or not, to practice, like, not breaking, uh, character cadence, or character speech patterns. Because you actually have a template to go off of. Uh, anyway, point is, I respect fan fictions. Uh, although we laughed at this a lot. Thank you for bringing me on. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.